Hey guys, today we are going to be making a gang sheet in Layout Designer 3.0. But first, let's talk about a couple of things. The first thing I wanna talk about is the background on your images. So we are going to upload the no background logo and we're gonna size it down so that way everybody can see. And as you import this, you will see that you can still get that gray and white checker coming through and that means there's no background. When we go in and add the logo with a background, you can see immediately that those white checkers, those gray and white checkers behind it are gone. When you look up here in the corner and here in the middle and when you click off of it it can be hard to tell because some of those checkers are white but one way to double check is come up here to the background and you can change that background to any color you want but we are going to go with a light gray so that way it is easy to tell over here in our first one and then on the second one, you see that background very clearly. So just make sure that the background has been removed. There are background removers out there and you can always check our Facebook group for recommendations on doing that. And the second thing we want to talk about before making a gang sheet is we want to talk about the bounding box. So let's go ahead and upload our logo again with different files, one that is labeled good. We are gonna go ahead and open that one up and import it into the layout designer. And we are going to change this size to four inches. So four inches, you can see where that blue box is around it when you hold it up to the ruler it measures about four inches and you can see that the design is right up against that box. Now let's upload the other logo that we have labeled as bad and we're going to see the difference. So let's change this size again to four inches just like the other one. And as it snaps, you can see the difference. Let's hold this up to the ruler and you can see that the bounding box measures four inches and you see all this space, all this extra space. And when you actually put the design up against that ruler, it barely measures over three inches. That is because the program is measuring that bounding box, not the size of the image itself. So make sure that when you guys are uploading that it is a design that has that close bounding box. There can be a little bit of a gap, but you don't want it to be so much that it is going to completely change the size of your design that you need. Now let's get into actually making our gang sheet. So over here on the left, you will see that there is a two foot gang sheet, which is 22 inches by 24 inches. We also have a five foot gang sheet, which is 22 inches by 60 inches. So over here in the layers panel, we are going to choose just a random image that we have and let's pick out this first grade teacher because uh, it's super cute and I love it. <laughs> so let's go ahead and change the size a little bit, see what that size is measuring. So that's a little bit too big for, for the average shirt. So let's take that down just a little bit and you can move it if you want, but it should be fine right there at the top. And then making a gang sheet is so easy because you just add the new layer and you go in and let's find this uh, little birthday, <laughs> this cute little dinosaur birthday image. Um, and we're gonna size it down to about what a kid's size shirt would be. And you can move it around the canvas if you want, but we're just gonna keep it right about there. Now let's move it back. Use up as much space as we can. Uh, but the one thing you do want to make sure is 
that there is enough room for you to be able to cut with your scissors whenever you receive your game sheet um, and that it's not too close together. So we're just going to add another file and let's measure it down a little bit. And it's too big to fit up there in the corner, but what we can do is rotate it. We're gonna rotate it 90 degrees and it fits right there, perfect. So that way we can use up as much space as possible. So let's talk about duplicating. Let's add another logo. Um, let's do this football, tis the season. It's a really cute design. So we're gonna measure it down to about what the average shirt will be. And we're gonna move it over just a little bit to make sure that it's not too close to the other file because again, we need to be able to get scissors through there. And you're going to click on the edit and up here, you can choose how many duplicates you need. So let's make four shirts. So we need three more. And the program automatically fills in where it thinks it's best for those designs to lay. And you can even go in and edit each one individually. So for example, let's just change the size of this one down here to five inches and it only changes the one. So if you have the same logo, multiple different sizes shirts, you can go in and change how you need it to be. It's super customizable uh, and it makes life so easy. So we still have all kinds of space to fill in with designs. So we're just gonna go in, pick some random designs, do some duplicates, see what all we can fit in here. So once we have as many images as we need on here, you can still see where there is a lot of empty space. So one thing I really love to recommend to people, especially if you have a small business, is go ahead and add a few copies of your own logo in there. That way you can apply it to any kind of marketing materials to hand out to people. Um, if you are the kind of business to put your logo in the back of um, your t-shirt where the tag is, go ahead, size it up. Uh, and then same thing with that duplicate feature, uh, go ahead, add as many as you can fit on there. And then that way you have plenty of logos for any items that you have that you want to use for promotion and marketing. You know, if you add that tag to any of your products, uh, then that is a super easy way to fill in all of that extra space. You can absolutely leave that space there if you want to, you are still getting an amazing deal. I just think that this is a fantastic way to help promote your materials to those in your community and you're not wasting any space. And after you have your game sheet how you want it, you can come down here, label it, save it, and you can add it to your cart after it has been saved. One more thing before I let you guys go from this video is I want to talk about my projects. So up here, you can click on that, my projects. You can see the DTF items you have in your cart. You can clone it as many times as you want. You can even see the products that you already have in an order to be printed. And you can do the same thing, get those cloned, however you wanna do that. And then if you keep scrolling, you will see where you have saved all of your projects. So these are all of our past projects that we have done. 
And if there's any point that we have an order from months ago, you can go in and grab whichever files that you need and add them to the cart, as many as you need, and you're good to go. So I really hope that this has helped you guys with creating a game sheet and some information on images that you can use in the layout designer. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We are here to help you put the questions in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching.